probably as many females I know. Many. I'd say about half of the people I know are male. A few, quite a few, quite a lot. Maybe like a couple, like, I don't know, like a handful. <laughs> <laughs> Uh, <laughs> I don't know. Respect, honesty. I, I don't know. Humour. Some, just being able to be with somebody who makes me laugh. Cool taste in music. Um, honest. Ambition. Genuine kindness. I, I don't know. I, uh... Compassion. Communication and effort. I look for someone who I find interesting and who finds me interesting. Someone that I can share a connection with. And someone who makes me feel loved. Yeah, just someone you can like have fun with and like be friends with and not have to like act a certain way or like portray yourself in a certain way where you think they'd like you better. Half the things that I just listed are probably assets that all men should possess. I shouldn't even have to look for them. Like, should I really have to look for respect? No, I shouldn't. Probably around five or six months ago. I don't know. It was a few months ago. Probably like two weeks ago. I, I cry. I don't really see males cry much, but I'm glad that I can when they do. I feel happy that they can share that emotion with me. It's very rare though. I think whoever goes through the most shit, <laughs> um, don't think it matters. It's not who is supposed to cry more, it's basically you cry when you want to cry. A girl is always supposed to be crying, but in reality, it shouldn't be. It should be anyone who's feeling emotional. They both should. I think I cry a lot, but that's just because I like to, I like, like it feels good to let stuff out, whereas other people might deal with it in a different way, and there's nothing wrong with that as well. More often than not, it's harder for a man to cry than it is for a woman because the men, you know, suppress, where most men that I know, when you feel, when feeling the urge to cry, it's the whole thing, oh, don't cry, don't cry. As soon as you start feeling that urge, most men will turn away, look down, cover their face. People are ashamed to cry. And I don't agree with that. I don't think you should be. It's, you know, there's power and vulnerability. I hope the people that I care about care about me. The people that I choose to have close to me so family, friends, flatmates, workmates. Uh, my mum and my friends um, and my sister and my flatmates. I would say friends, but probably it would be a small group of friends who actually care about me to the point where they'd ask how I am. I guess like my family and my friends. Um. Rosie just did that. <laughs> you care about me. I care about myself. <laughs> yeah, like people you spend time with the most. Yeah. People that like want to spend time with you, um, like invest into you. I believe, and I hope this is true, that I am important to them. And because they know that their actions will be reciprocated because I care about them just as much as they care about me. Because I care about them. I hope it's because, you know, they value our friendship or our relationship in some way. But I think when you show someone that you care about them and you make them feel that, they, they tend to care about you back. Because, I don't know, I think I'm a nice guy. <laughs> I like to think of myself as a reasonably empathetic guy. I'd like to think that I bring joy into the people around me's lives. That's what I enjoy doing and I get joy out of, out of that and seeing people smile and I love to act a fool because <laughs> it makes other people want to act a fool too and that's, that's a lot of fun to me. When you form a relationship with someone over time, you do develop that, um, especially if it is reciprocated both ways. And I think that's how you develop like, a relationship where you care for, like both sides care for each other is when you're both like giving. Because they're human. <laughs> In our culture, maybe men choose to like hide their feelings sometimes, but that doesn't mean that they're not going through as much or aren't feeling the same emotions as women do.
or you don't even have to ask that question. I mean, we just should care about men anyway. It's just like, why should we care about women? Like, it's hard to answer that because it's like, why shouldn't we? You know? No, we should we should care about men as you know we should care about each other. It's a you know, the, the brotherhood of man. The amount of care you require is dependent on your circumstances, but I think that everyone deserves to be cared for and looked after. And I don't think that men have any less of a right to be cared for and asked if they're okay compared to women. I guess it's because men are often the ones who are expected to not need much care. You know, they're supposed to be, again, macho or tough or somewhat not sensitive at all. And I think that that's why they need extra care because of those expectations. What a question. When they like the same sex. When they're attracted to the opposite sex. Oh, the same sex. <laughs> <laughs> Andrew, you're gay. It means you are attracted to and feel romantic towards the same sex. Homosexuality is to be something that's entirely concerned with who whom I choose to go to bed with and nothing else. Uh, stereotypes. It's the things like dressing well, taking care of your your skin and your hair, caring about your appearance in general, and maybe even talking about things that like tough guys aren't supposed to talk about, crying in front of your girlfriend, those kind of things that are stereotypically put in a box of being gay is immediately perceived as oh, you're, you, you have, you're feminine, you like guys. What media has done is they've really constructed a self-image for many viewers to see feminine people as gay. And that's just not the case because being feminine or being masculine is not a biological construct, it's a social construct. So you can't really say, oh, you're feminine, therefore you're gay. Like, it doesn't make sense really, so. Because people have the wrong portrayal of what gay is or, yeah, I guess maybe some gay men are more feminine. And then people regard that as like a sign that you are gay and then they'll just project on to everyone because they're different. Uh, people associate effeminate, like effeminate behaviour or empathetic or feminine traits to be uh, something associated with homosexuality or, hom or, or associated with it just being a negative thing. And it comes back to, you know, like if you're calling someone gay in a bad context, like you're gay, that's a bad thing, that's, you know, rooted in the beliefs that you've been taught to and how we, how we process and how we think about sexuality. Yeah, I think they should be in touch with their femininity because I think it, like the way you phrase the question, their femininity, like they have it in themselves already. So you should ha be in touch with everything that you already have within you anyway. I think men should just be more comfortable being who they really are. So if you have a more feminine side, be comfortable showing that, and if you prefer to be more masculine, be comfortable showing that. I think that a man should be able to be in contact with masculine and fem masculinity and femininity, femininity. Well, because you know everything life is about balance. To be, to be a full rounded person, to be a whole person, you have to have um, an awareness of your own femininity, and there's power in that. I see femininity as a trait that is natural, like. Everyone has it, and it should not be ignored. I think men tend to see depression and mental illness as a sign of weakness. And what I mean by that is men have traditionally been raised to remain detached from emotional pain and suffering because these are seen as feminine traits. A lot of men, not all men, see mental illness as a personal issue and a lack of personal fortitude and what that means is that they fall to the false idea that they should be strong enough to deal with their issues on their own. I think that men are typically less likely to have the support networks around them to navigate um, mental health. It's hard to talk about and it's hard to, you know, if you haven't grown up with a question of how are you really feeling it's really hard to ask that or to be asked that. Probably because like 
their support system might be lacking or they can't find a way to express what they're going through or feel like they can't. They feel like trapped in themselves and can't really like confide in anyone or feel like they can't because of like maybe the way they were raised or people they're around or how they perceive like society. I think it's because of the expectations of society that you can't cry, you can't show your emotions and if I couldn't do that I would explode, you know, because guys are feeling like that, even though they may not be expressing it at all, it just makes them feel lost and trapped and probably not accepted because they feel like they're doing something wrong or that there's something wrong with them. It's, it's, it's awful. I remember my brother saying to me, or even my dad, when I was little and I like fell over and started crying and they're like, oh, stop crying, man up. And I hate that. It's like, that's straight up saying you can't fall over and in pain cry if you're a man. What it means to be a man is someone who shows both masculine and feminine traits and is not embarrassed by it. To know that it's okay to not fall to this masculine stereotype. Like someone who is like wholeheartedly themselves, but also to be, yeah, someone who is, um, I guess, like strong, but also vulnerable. Someone balanced feels like willing to show both sides of themselves. It's to care for yourself um, and your environment and the people around you. Create space for people to express themselves, to hold your own masculinity, to hold all of the, all of the, all of these things we've been taught about what a man really is, like, you know, strong, all of that, you know, that's great. But what is a man if he can't flip that on its side and hold his own masculinity and say, well, this is who I am. And, you know, this femininity is also part of being a human. To be a man is to be a whole, as a whole person, not just one idea of a man. You know, a man is... A man is so many things. To be a man is to be sensitive. To be a man is to, to be able to cry, to allow yourself to cry, to, to, to hold people, to be held, to be there for someone. You know, uh, I think, yeah, to be a man is to, you know, to know yourself and to be able to have a persona and have an idea of yourself that's strong enough to withstand someone's projections of what a man should be. Yeah. Nice. <laughs> Good, that's it. Any more questions? <laughs>